What's going on, everyone? It's Rich Haywood here from Big Gun Ice Cream Productions and Team RTFC, welcoming you to yet another episode of Good Times with Retro Rich. So today, we're going to go back to a topic we haven't talked about in a little bit, not since E3. That topic is the Intellivision Amica. But rather than give you my personal opinions or another anecdote or story or even news about the system, as we've been usually doing here on the channel, I'm going to go a little bit different today. So I asked my son, who's just turned recently five, what he thought about the Intellivision Amico. And what I did was actually just play for him the 1010 2020 gameplay trailer, where they had all the 30 games that were shown and all those kind of things. I just kind of showed him the trailer a couple times. And then at the end, asked him, all right, well, which one of those games do you want to play? You know, played it back for him just so he can get it fresh in his mind. He's like, all right, cool. What do you think about this one? Or this one, or this one? Which ones do you, which ones do you want to play? And I thought it was really interesting to get his opinion. Now, was he completely psyched about all 30 games? And he was like, oh, let me play them all? No. No, no, he wasn't. And I didn't expect him to. Because there are some concepts, of course, you know, being four or five years old, that he looks at it and he'll go, eh, it's just not interesting to me. Now, were there some that I knew as soon as he saw he was just going to go nuts over? Absolutely. And I just think it was fun just to kind of see his face light up. Because be, to be honest, a large part of the Amico and the, me purchasing the Amico is, is actually just to get that. It's to get that, my son's reaction. That smile on his face when he goes, oh man, I really, I really like X, where X is usually something that involves tires or wheels. And then he sees something that he knows he's going to like as far as a, a product or a TV show or something like that. And his face just lights up and he's like, Daddy, I just want to play this or I just want to watch this or, you know, can we go to the store and get these things? Like, that's really what the Amico is for me for a large part of it is so that my son can, can really enjoy, you know, what the system has to offer. So, of course, what better way to get more insight than to ask him about his opinions? So, like I said, I got my trusty phone. And let's go, let's go to it. So the 10, 10 2020 trailer was filled with about 30 different games. Now, among them are all the heavy hitters. You know, you've got your, you know, your Astro Smash and your Night Stalker and your Biplanes and you've got Shark Shark and, you know, like all, the, all those kind of, you know, those, those kind of natural titles for someone like me, someone that grew up with in television and Atari, either in their house or an uncle's house or friends or something like that. I mean, we know those titles from back in the day and then seeing them reimagined is actually kind of cool, right? You know, Moon Patrol, like that kind of stuff, right? So of course, you know, we're gonna get jazzed, but does it translate to the mind of the five-year-olds? Well, let's find out. So first off in the video, I, I think I went chronologically, so it'll be actually easier for me to cut out these clips as we go along and we'll be running them as we go along. So the first one that caught Douglas's eye was indeed Shark Shark. Why? Well, it's a bright, colorful game that has cool little fish going around and you know, kind of looks like an interactive aquarium kind of thing. Douglas actually has a, a toy that's in his room that was from his early days. It was a little nightlight that had fish that played music and stuff like that, but he loves the thing and he looks at it all the time. So I can see that he might actually be associating that experience with that toy uh, with this game and say, oh, well, maybe it'll be like a different thing or something that's very similar. I mean, you sit back and relax and watch it. I mean, little does he know that he'll be able to interact with the game and then be able to control the fish and then, you know, like eat, eat all the fish to get bigger and then like, you know, avoid the sharks and like, it's, it'll be cool. It'll be cool for him. But he, he def it definitely caught his eye. So that's one that's definitely on his list. Then we go a little bit forward in the 1010 video to battle tanks. Now, of course, tires, wheels, treads, or as he calls them, caterpillars. All of those things are interesting to Douglas. So there is a game that involves a vehicle and it moves and you can control it. He's in. So battle tanks was surely one that when I asked him, hey, do you want to play this game? His answer was absolutely, I want to play this game. Same with Shark Shark. He was like, hey, do you want to play this? And he's like, yeah, I play that. I'm like, yeah, cool. So Battle Tank is definitely on the list. So, I mean, 
Naturally though, right? It's got tires and wheels. Next one is Moon Patrol. I mean, come on. It's a buggy and it jumps and it kind of looks like a monster truck. He loves monster trucks. So he's, he's all about this game. This one was really exciting for him. It's like, oh yeah, I can jump into the buggies and do all this crazy stuff. And it's really awesome. It's really, really cool. So he's totally psyched about that one. So again, no brainer, right? Next one, Astro Smash. Now again, it's kind of like a ship that's on wheels, maybe a turret tank kind of deal, but still it's got tires and wheels. So it checks that box, right? And he's interested. It's big and bright and flashy and all that kind of stuff. So it's, it's really cool. So definitely Astro Smash on the list. Very exciting times for, for Douglas. Skiing is next on the list. Now that one definitely took me off guard. I thought for sure he was gonna see it and go, eh, it was all right. Maybe it's the jumping. Cause he does love when cars take over ramps and jump. And he saw like those, those couple little clips where the, the skiing people on the screen were jumping over cliffs while trying to avoid an avalanche. Maybe that was exciting for him, but he definitely seemed interested in the game. And hey, well that's awesome. Cause it's on my list too. Now, you know, if they were to compare, of course, Shark Shark, Battle Tanks, Moon Patrol, and Astro Smash are also on my list because they're games that I have either wanted to play or direct relations to games I've already have played that I want to play again. I mean, I've already played Shark Shark, Battle Tanks is ostensibly combat or the, you know, armored battle really uh, from the Intellivision. Moon Patrol is Moon Patrol. Astro Smash is Astro Smash. Skiing is also on the Intellivision as skiing. So they're, they're all like the Intellivision classics coming back. Of course, they're on the list. Another interesting one that was on the list that I didn't expect and actually expected him to say, no, I am not interested in this at all was Night Stalker. Now he was interested in it and I, I, couldn't, I couldn't understand why. Again, there's no tires or wheels in this one, but maybe it was the big, bright, flashy graphics or the cool maze thing or something, something got him on it. He didn't actually say ex exactly why he wanted to play the game, but he was interested. So that's pretty cool. And definitely a surprise for me um, as a parent, because you know normally I kind of can tag exactly what he's gonna be, what he's gonna like, but it was, it was cool to see him interested in that one. Because again, of course, it's on my list too. Night Stalker is a huge game from the old television days. So, you know, it's awesome. It's pretty cool. So as we move along, we got Liar's Dice. It's another one that's kind of out of left field. So I'm sure it's because he has, he knows absolutely nothing about the game. And quite frankly, I, I don't really know much about it either, but I'm interested and I want to check it out. And now I will because Douglas is interested too. I think it's the fact that they, they've got those cool characters, like the, you know, the, the, the cool animal characters. And he watches some shows that are kind of, kind of similar where there's like anthropomorphic animals that, you know, like talk and whatever. You know, and that kind of thing. Maybe just relating that kind of thing. It's like a friendly, friendly kind of um, art aesthetic is, is kind of drawing him in. You know, maybe he won't like the game at all, but it, you know, when he sees the animals on the screen, he'll be like, oh, that's pretty cool. So who knows, who knows? But again, I mean, it's gonna be one that I'm checking out anyway. So that's cool. Then we get some, some givens. He's in Sesame Street. He saw those characters immediately, recognized Big Bird, recognized the Count, recognized Telly. He's, he's all about it. He's all about it. Cause he, he likes Sesame Street. It's a Sesame Street game. It's a given, you know, it's a, it's a slam dunk. So maybe another, another good, good example of when well, you get the right license and you put the license in front of a kid that's of the age where they're watching the product anyway, they're going to associate that with, oh, well, I can do this thing now on this new box. Done, done. Care Bears, the same way. You know, but Care Bears has the added benefit of, okay, yeah, they're cute bears and like that kind of stuff. And it's nice for kids. He's not necessarily into that kind of stuff, to be honest. I mean, he's got stuffies that he likes, but you know, he has two bears. He doesn't really, you know, doesn't really like play with them too much. He's, he's got a duck that he's had since he was an infant. It was actually one of his, um, one of his binkies that has since worn away. He kind of just has it like a, like a beanie baby almost. But you know, it goes with him ever everywhere. He has little adventures. It's, it's kind of like a you know Christopher Robin and Pooh Bear. It's, it's like Douglas and Ducky. I mean, it's just you know, it's, that's that's what that's what it's all about for him. So it was interesting to see him interested in the property. But as you can see, 
the game's got tires and wheels. Done. Check. Check for Douglas. I mean, it's like, oh, it's another game that's got cars, it's bright, it's colorful. You know, they, you know, he, he might be able to drive it or drive it off a ramp or something. He's in. He's in. So, of course, we'll be checking out Care Bears. Then we get to the absolute slam dunks of this presentation. Douglas went absolutely nuts when he saw these two games. The first one we're going to see, we're going to talk about is Sideswipers, which I think is now going to be called Hot Wheels Colossal Crash or something like that. Pretty sure that's going to be the name. It is going to be a Hot Wheels franchise name. It's not going to be called Sideswipers anymore. But Sideswipers, of course, is that game that we're talking about. And I mean, come on, you know, it's got the cars, it's got the tracks. He already has cars and tracks that kind of do the similar thing because he has Hot Wheels toys. He's got this um, this LED light up car track that, you, you know, you can put all over the floor and have stuff like that. He's got Thomas the Train Engine tracks. He's got all sorts of crazy stuff. Um, again, tires and wheels come on the theme. He's all into it. Um, it's awesome. And he, he just can't, you know, like he flipped out. He's like, oh man, I totally want to play that game. And like they, they like, you know, rip an open package on Christmas day. Like, you know, like the, the, the kid that, you know, that, that meme that was just like, oh, yeah, that, that face. Imagine that, that was, that was Douglas, you know, looking at, looking at this game. So, you yeah, know, that, that's awesome. That's, that's totally cool. And again, I mean, it's going to be on my list because it looks like it's going to be a fun party game. You know, uh, the, uh, the Colossal Crash, Crash game. I can't wait to check it out. <clears throat> and he's stoked. He just cannot wait to play this. So that's going to be really cool. And then, of course, we get to the one that if there was a, a level beyond the meme kid at Christmas freaking out about a toy, it would be Douglas watching the trailer for Evil, Evil Knievel. And why is it? Well, because the phone that we're recording on right now has a copy of Evil Knievel on iOS on it. And we play that game every Wednesday while we're waiting for our chiropractor's visit. It's kind of like his, his, his bonus. He does a really good job at the end of the day at school. We're waiting for our chiropractor's appointment and in the parking lot. You know, I give him a couple minutes, he plays on the phone, but he loves the game, loves it. Why? Well, it's, it doesn't matter to him that it's Evil Knievel, right? You know, the, the, the franchise doesn't necessarily hit with him. Of course, you know, he, Evil Knievel was somebody that I watched back, you know, in the reruns back in the days in the 80s as I was growing up. So it, Evil Knievel means something to me, but it doesn't matter to him. In fact, he actually calls the game Jumpy because he watches the show on Amazon Prime called Stinky and Dirty. And in that show, there is a stunt motorcycle that does tricks, kind of like Evil Knievel, but it, there's no rider, it's just the motorcycle, and the motorcycle's name is Jumpy. So of course the game is called Jumpy to Douglas because that's how he associates it. But it doesn't matter because he's enthralled with the game. He loves it, loves it. And in fact, I've made quite a few references in a lot of other videos that I've made that I told him one day he'd be able to play that game on a TV. And that, game, that, that day will be whenever this thing comes out and we finally get it at the house and I buy the game for him or whatever, but he's just he always, he's asking me, oh cool, well this is awesome, I'm playing on the phone, when can we play on the TV day? Well, you know, we gotta wait for the system to come out and as soon as it does, we'll be able to do it and we'll get to play. But he's stoked about this game. And I gotta say, I'm pretty stoked about it too. Because again, I have it on iOS on the phone I can't wait to sit down and play it in the living room. You know, it'd be really cool. Yeah, yeah, okay. People can tell me, oh yeah, you have an iOS phone. You can just screencast it. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, you try that. Try that on Apple TV. Screencast it to the television. You can tell me how that's gonna work out. Yeah, it's not it's not a great experience, let me tell you. I tried. It doesn't work out. And it's okay on the phone, yes. And yeah, the phone controls are pretty tight and they're responsive enough. It's good enough where I was able to get golds on every single level, on every single stage of each level. So I've, I've completed this game. I've, you know, it's not like, oh, I, I play it every once in a while. I, I have the bona fides to tell you. The game's pretty cool and I liked it so much that I put that much time in it. And I, I would not have put that much time in a game if I didn't like it. There's just no way, I don't have the time. 
You know, I've got dailies that I play that I haven't, you know, put as much time and effort into than I, than I have the Evil Knievel game. So it's, trust me, I like it. I like the game. And I cannot wait to play the new modes, you know, if they, if they make changes to the levels, like new puzzles. I mean, it might as well be a new game for me if they do that. And then on top of it all, having that multiplayer mode where you can get like the, the rockets where you can fire off, you know, and, and, and go over the cliff and stuff like that. I mean, that's, that's awesome. You know, I, I can't wait to play that because that'll just be fun. You know, something that, that's so easy to play. I can just sit down and go, all right, well, Douglas, let's, let's go play the rocket part of the jumpy game. He's going to be down, you know. Like, all right, cool, Danae, come on over and, you know, my mother-in-law, Debbie, you know, come on over and just, you know, sit down and let's, let's play. You know, we can play a couple rounds of that and, you know, that'll be fun. You know, and then maybe we'll transfer and go to one of the other games on this list. Go to Wires Dice, go to Shark Shark, go to, you know, Battle Tanks, go to, you know, maybe maybe Moon Patrol or Skiing or something like that. You know, or, you know, I think I said Liar's Dice, but, you know, or, or Colossal Crash. I mean, why not, right? It's what, it's what the whole system's about. It's about, like, oh, playing that one game that one person wants to play, maybe two-player. And then you start grabbing people and you bring them to the couch. Hey, come on, come on, well, look, another couple of rounds before dinner's ready. You know, that's that's how I see the system. You know, that's how I see see this whole thing going down. You know, is it going to replace half the other stuff that I do on the channel? You know, just like take over whole cloth? Probably not. No, I mean, my master system right here is not going anywhere. My Retron 77 is not going anywhere. My Retron 5 that I'm knocking over stuff and playing master system games on, totally not going anywhere. And that Legends Ultimate Arcade Cabin, again, not going anywhere either. So neither is my Intellivision. You know, none of that stuff's going to go. I'm still going to be playing all that stuff. But I'm really excited about the Amico because it offers that other thing that I want. So all of those things I just mentioned, the Retron, my original Sega Master System, my Retron 5, my Legends Ultimate, all of that stuff. I have to drag people down to the studio to play. They don't come willingly most times. Yeah, you know, my brother-in-law, you know, he'll come. He'll come and play because he's interested, you know, in, in that kind of stuff. And I can get Douglas to come down and play the Legends Ultimate Cabinet as long as we're playing something that has tires and wheels. But if there was something in the living room that had all that stuff that was quick and easy, that's the, that's the big part, quick and easy. Hit a button, play for a couple minutes, turn it off and walk away. That's the only way I'm going to get the rest of them. I'm not going to get Danae to be playing um, any of these games. Not, not, not anymore. They're too busy. They're too busy of a family. You know, my mother-in-law play a couple, you know, but, but she's into that stuff. Like she was into playing the Wii when the Wii came out. She liked to play the bowling game and, you know, she played tennis and, you know, I was good for a little bit and then he put it away and then, he, you know, the box grew dust on it and then that was it. But if there's a consistent flow of these pick up and play games, the simple experiences, and that's what Amico's attempting to offer. Man, that's going to be a living room that's going to be hopping every Sunday because we host dinner every Sunday at our house. You know, definitely something I'm looking forward to. But anyway, so you got a little bit of our, you know, my personal insight in the family. And on top of that, you got a little insight into uh, Douglas's picks as well, you know, which is pretty cool. So anyway, with that being said, what do you guys think? You know, what, what, is, uh, what is up with you and your family? You know, how do, how do, you, um, how do you think the, the Amico is going to hit with you? And have you shown this video, the, the link, I'm going to link it down below. Have you shown this video to your family and friends? You know, and if so... Yeah, let me know. Let me know in the comments below what they're, in, they're excited about. Because I think that's what it's all about, right? Amigo is trying to bring people together to play. So, anyway. That's all we got for you for today. Um, we're going to kick it off to the friends, of course. You know, check it out. Check them out. Give them some likes. Give them some subs. Give them all the cool things. And, of course, um, we talk about other things just other than Amico and Master System and, th and, and all the other things. We forgot to mention the Evercade in that conversation. Now, I didn't forget it. I just wanted to mention it now so we can casually move us to the friends from across the pond. Where they talk about Evercade all the time in the Evercade fans group on Facebook. And of course, the Evercade live sessions which happen just about every last Thursday of the month on It's Much More's channel. So you check them out because it's pretty cool, and they have awesome discussions about the Evercade. VS is right around the corner. It's going to be coming out in November, so that's going to be an awesome time. So, anyway, check them out. It brings us back here to us here at Bacon Ice Cream Productions. We thank you so much for watching. Keep checking us out. 
If you could on the way out, hit that red subscribe button. It'd be awesome for us. And of course, until next time, we will catch you next time for some good times. I'm Rich, and we will see you later. Take it easy, guys. Team RTSC.BaconIceCream.com